Hi, and welcome to the Lock Lab 101 YouTube channel. This is part seven of the View Within series where we're talking about mortise locks and how you can um, become more proficient at opening them and understanding the, the techniques and methods involved. Um, I've held off long enough now and at long last it's the inevitable lever conversation. So in front of you, or in front of me even, are two levers, both taken from the ERA Fortress lock. The lever on the left is a number one, and that is actually the highest lift lever that you are going to find within uh, the ERA Fortress lock. So in other words, um, when the key is put in, and turned, this lever is literally that will lift the highest within the lock. And next to it is a lever number seven, which is the lowest lift lever. And of course, that's uh, when the key goes in, it's the lever that lifts the lowest. If you look at the bottom, you can see the lever bellies. You can see there's a lot more uh, metal on the bottom of the lever number seven than there is on the lever number one. Um, and uh, talking about the anatomy of the levers, you've got the, um, the lever springs on the side. This is the pivot hole where the lever will pivot from. And this little notch here sits on the bolt stump and uh, keeps the lever in its uh, lowest position. This is where the bolt stump will run through um, and then when the lock is unlocked, the bolt stump will be residing within this uh, cutout here in the, uh, in the middle of the lever. And so when the, bolt, when the uh, lock is locked, um, this part of the lever here sits on the bolt stump. And the job as a picker is to lift all of the levers up so that this channel here lines up with the bolt stump and allows it free passage through and unlocks the bolt. I hope I'm not trying to suck, teach you to suck eggs here, but it's important to understand these concepts. So if you look at lever number one, which is the highest lift lever, what you will notice is just before um, the bolt stump can have pass, clear passage through, there's a little cutout in the lever here. And that little cutout is called an anti-pick notch. And it's designed, if you're picking the lever and you're lifting it up, it's designed to get caught on the bolt stump and obviously prevent the bolt stump from uh, retracting through the levers. Um, you'll notice that on lever number seven, Again, there is an anti-pick notch, which is residing there. Um, and again, that's designed to uh, thwart your picking of the lock um, and, uh, and to stop the bolt stump from, uh, from passing through. So when we're uh, picking these levers, we always need to be mindful of where these uh, anti-pick notches are and we also need to work out whether um, the lock is stuck in an anti-pick notch or whether it's actually in its true gate which would allow the uh, the bolt to pass through. So this is the uh, bolt stump of the ERA Fortress and it's called a V-notch uh, bolt stump you can see that this little notch here is shaped as a V so it has a sharp edge here and a sharp edge there. Those edges are designed to catch on the um, anti-pick notches of the levers as you're lifting them and prevent you from opening the lock. Here we can see I've put lever number one inside the lock. Remember lever number one is a high lift lever, so it needs to be lifted high to allow the bolt stump to pass through. When the curtain is turned, it interfaces with the bolt 
and uh, pushes the bolt stump into the lever pack. This is when we're picking and we're using our tension tool. So when we tension this, you can see that that bolt stump will press against the levers. And as we've discussed in previous videos, the levers will bind so that when you try and lift them, you will feel resistance. Now on the high lift lever, like lever number one, you can see this anti-pick notch is before the actual um, true gaze. So whilst we're applying pressure, against this lever and then we lift, as we lift the lever up, um, you will see that the lever will get to the point where that anti-pick notch will then engage with the bolt stump. And now, this is what, what uh, we call the, um, the lock is now stuck in anti-pick. So as you can see now, that is not, that is not moving. It is well and truly wedged in there. So that little anti-pick notch is now stuck into this V-notch on this, on this bolt stump. So when we're picking it, we actually need to lift this lever as beyond that point so that then the bolt stump will engage into the true gaze of the lock as follows. So now I've put lever number seven into this lock and lever number seven, if you remember, was the lowest lift lever in the, uh, in the ERA Fortress uh, lever pack. And when you tension the bolt stump against this lever, you can see that if it's binding and we lift it, then the true gate for this, uh, for this lever will appear very quickly and then will allow the um, bolt stump to pass through uh, and you can see that there's no anti-pick notch on the bottom there so this particular lever is designed to catch you out if you over lift it so if you lift it too high so if you were picking this and you lifted it to this point you can now see that the anti-pick notch has been caught in the v-notch on the bolt stump and the lock is now again in anti-pick and, uh, and you will not be able to get the lock open until the lock is either reset or you pick this out of this anti-pick notch. I've now put two levers in this lock. Um, one of them is in its true gate, which is this top lever. So in other words, it's aligned so the bolt stump can pass through. The lever below is caught up in its anti-pick notch right here, preventing this from passing through. When you're picking the lock, people refer to the sound that levers make to, to help you determine um, what, uh, what situation the levers are actually in. So one of the noises that we look for is tapping. And if you look at the lever that's in the true gate, You can hear it tapping and there's also maybe a millimeter or a bit more of movement there the lever below which is actually um, caught up in the anti-pick notch if we try and rock that one backwards and forward you can hear that there is no sound coming from there and the lever is solid it's hardly moving at all so the levers that tend to be in the true gates will have this amount of movement on them. And the levers that are not in the true gates and maybe stuck in an anti-pick notch, they might have a little bit of rattle to them, which is nowhere near the same as that. So you might hear a little bit of rattle and there's certainly nowhere near the same amount of movement. So you can actually determine the difference between a lever that's in its true gate and a lever that needs to be picked out of its false notch. This is the entire lever pack from the ERA Fortress, numbered from one through to seven. Um, this 
lever one needs the highest lift in the lock to get an open and the number seven needs the lowest lift to get it open. And what uh, you will notice about these levers is lever one and two have an anti-pick notch before the true gate and all the rest of the levers have an anti-pick notch after the true gate. So what this means is, is if these levers aren't lifted low, uh, high enough, they will go into anti-pick and stop you from opening. And the rest of the levers, if they're over lifted or if they're lifted too high, they will go into anti-pick and again, they will prevent you from opening the lock. So wouldn't it be good if we knew which levers needed to be lifted high and which levers um, only needed to be nudged gently or and certainly not over lifted. And actually you can work this out when uh, in any one of a number of different ways um, when you first approach the lock. One of the first ways of detecting whether you have high or low lift levers in your, uh, in your fortress is to pop the curtain pick in and slide it down under the lever, be le uh, lever bellies. What you will notice is the levers that obstruct uh, the pick's progress. And in this particular lock, the first two levers I've put in are low lift levers. And then I put two high lift levers in and you can see that the pick is being obstructed from rising up. If I pull it up, the top lever here is a low lift lever, it's number seven. And you can see the pick can pass past that between the curtain and the and the lever belly, but then it stops. And it stops because in this particular configuration, I've got a lever number seven on the top, which is a low lift lever. And if I take that out, the lever underneath it, in fact, the two levers underneath are a lever number one and number two highs. And they are the ones that typically obstruct your pick as you're moving it up and down the curtain. So if you know where you are in the lock, uh, you can feel that lever five is allowing the pick to move. Lever four is allowing the pick to move. And then it's becoming obstructed on lever three, lever two, and then I've taken the top lever out, but that one would not have obstructed the pick. So you can virtually tell, just by putting your pick in, whether the levers are gonna be obstructing your, uh, your um, movement front and back. And if you can work out which of those levers is obstructing your movement, then they would be a high lift lever. And remember, the high lift levers have the anti-pick notch before the true gaze, which means that they need to be lifted beyond that or lifted high for you to be able to open the lock. And the rest of the levers, so if I pop this lever back in now, these are low lift levers and you can see the anti-pick notch is below the true gaze. So they only need to be nudged up but not too far, otherwise they will go into anti-pick. What you will also notice is the different shapes of the levers on the back of the lock here. So a lever one, which is a high lift lever, you can see there's a lot of metal missing um, and quite a big space there. And the lever underneath, I believe, is a six. And you can see that there is actually a very discernible difference between those. If I put a lever number seven in now on top of that, you can see that that has completely obstructed the other levers. If we tip it on its side and take a look, you can see, let's just get that out. 
struggling with the focus there. Let's just, there we go. You can see that a pattern here is forming and that pattern there is exploited when you decode a lock to work out um, what lever pack or what the lever shapes are inside the lock or even the lever numbers. So some of the decoding tools on the market will exploit this difference in the back of these levers and the tool will be inserted and it will be able to read uh, the differences in these lever heights and therefore allow you to decode the lock, uh, build a makeup key for it or use a device like a pin and cam to uh, to be able to open the lock um, based on the intelligence that you've gathered from the levers. Um, there's another way of doing this and I will be showing that uh, in the next video which allows you to um, use your own pick wire to determine whether you've got high or low lift levers in the back of your lock and, I'll, and potentially allowing you to understand how you can pick it open.